As to the short term, uh, which is the defining for this purpose is, say, 2012, I think the outlook remains really quite uncertain. Uh, Kevin had a somewhat more optimistic uh, perspective, and I, I hope it's right. There certainly have been more positive numbers, and those numbers continue to build, and as that happens, I think more and more analysts are raising their projections, some now as high as 3 percent or thereabouts for 2012, and that could certainly be what happens, and I certainly hope that's what happens. But I think we also face very serious headwinds, and I think we have some serious tail risks. And tail risks, as you know, are these low probability events with very large consequences. Although, unfortunately, I think right now may, some of those events may not be so, such low probability, and I'll get back to the tail risks in a moment. In terms of the headwinds, uh, yes, the consumer position has improved, but the consumer still is, by historical standards, in a more difficult financial position uh, than has been the average case. Uh, we've had roughly stagnant median real wages. We have uh, fiscal drag at the state level. We still have some fiscal drag left at the federal level, though a lot of that's been solved. We have the adverse uh, confidence effects on business and consumers of our unsustainable long-term fiscal situation. There are various issues around housing and foreclosure that still, and housing prices that still affect our economy, and that list goes on and on. There are also some questions about what some of these more positive numbers actually mean. I'm not going to get into that right now because that itself is a rather lengthy subject, but I, I do think some of those, those more positive numbers are themselves subject to real question uh, upon analysis. Let me go back to the tail risks for a moment. As I've already said, I think some of these have a non-trivial probability of materializing. And if they do, they could have severe consequences. Let me men mention the three that I'm most focused on that are probably – the nature of tail risk is, is that it's the things that you don't think about that wind up creating the most trouble for you. But the three that come to my mind, the possibility of, of geopolitical difficulties, and we all know there are a lot of issues around Iran. and and other issues, uh, Pakistan, a nuclear country with a highly unstable political situation and so forth. A second one would be the possibility of a Eurozone failure to achieve stability within the period of this year. And I'll just try to get to a little bit of time, at least on the Eurozone at the end of this. And then the third is one that I think is a – which I do think is a very, very low probability, but not impossible. And that is that we get the kind of unexpected, sudden, and vicious change that can take place in markets but it happens in our markets, and we have the kind of fiscal disruptions or fiscally caused disruptions in our bond and currency markets that I mentioned before. I think the probability of that within the short term is very low, but I don't think you can totally rule it out. You put all this together, as I said a moment ago, I think we're still at a, a, a quite unclear uh, – I, I think the outlook for 2012 is still quite unclear. If you try to translate that into numbers, uh, consensus estimate these days, you know, it's kind of interesting when you talk to business people, others, there's a lot of talk about the fact the numbers are better. The numbers are better, people feel better about it. As I said a moment ago, hopefully that is what's going to turn out to happen. But then when you look at the actual estimates that analysts are making, a lot of them, the consensus estimate is still a, a touch under 2.5 percent for this year, although there's some now up to 3 and even a bit more. My own view is that, that the, what actually turns out to be the case could be any number within a very wide range of that 2.5 uh, percent, more or less 2.5 percent consensus estimate, and I think unemployment is likely to remain stubbornly high. Uh, 